Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This might be my last Bible study for a little while. I uh, believe my website has been set up. I haven't checked it yet, but um, the website company I hired to hold the website for me, they said they put a uh, web editor on it. Now, I should be able to figure it out and work it out and put load my uh, studies on there in case YouTube kicks me out. Now, I'm not going to leave YouTube, but uh, being that I have, oh, several hundred Bible studies, uh, it's not going to be easy putting together a website uh, so, you know, that's just, that. that's the name of that tune. But let's finish up this uh, Revelation chapter 12, Revealed. And we had read, let's see, Revelation 12, and we went to, oh, I guess 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And I think the woman is Israel, and I think Israel is the church. I mean, in Galatians 3.29, Jesus, uh, Paul says, And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. It doesn't say you become Abraham's seed. It doesn't say spiritual seed, like I've had pastors tell me. It says you are Abraham's seed. And God made his covenant with Abraham, confirmed it with Isaac, and then confirmed it with Jacob, who he changed his name to Israel. So, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water, water as a flood, as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth, angry. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So, what is this, a water-breathing dragon or serpent or what? Uh, you know, what's the water? What's the flood? Well, let's take a look. All right. Turn your Bibles to Revelation. We're going to go to chapter 17. And we're going to read... Uh, I guess we'll probably read the whole thing. What do you think? Yeah, let's do that. All right, Revelation chapter 17, starting in verse 1. Now remember, waters, the dragon opens his mouth, waters and a flood. All right, Revelation 17, 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying to, unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Okay. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. The wilderness. Not the cities. The wilderness, that's the future of the church, not, not, not the cities. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Isn't that what we read earlier in one of the previous studies? Oh, yeah. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay, so this is 
Mystery of Bab Mystery. Babylon the Great. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Hmm. Okay. Now, I want to make a point here. Mystery Babylon the Great was the one that killed a lot of people. And everybody will point out and say, well, that's the Catholic Church. Okay, but is that what the Bible says? Okay, let's take a look. All right, in verse 6, we had just read, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Now, a lot of, a lot of groups have been responsible for killing Christians. I mean, you've had the um, Islam, you've had the Muslims, and you've had uh, Roman Catholics during the Inquisition. And the Bible points out, well, guess what? Judaism. Hmm, okay. So let's take a look. Who was responsible for the martyrs of Jesus? Well, let's, and the blood of saints? Well, Jesus in Matthew 23, verse 37 says the following. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. In Revelation 11 and verse 8, it talks about the two martyrs, the, uh, the two witnesses that confront the uh, beast and the false prophet in the tribulation period. In Revelation 11, 8, it says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Is Jesus your Lord? Where was he crucified? Rome? Uh, no. Mecca? No. Uh, Jerusalem? Yeah. So, the great city is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Okay. Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in 14, 15, and then 16. He says, For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins always, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Huh. Huh. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets? Really? So where do they say, oh, well, this is Rome? Really? I mean, yeah, Rome killed a lot of people, but, you know, what can I tell you? And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Verse 7. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. 
when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, does that mean there are people whose names were not written in the book of life from the from the foundation of the world? Uh, you know, I took two semesters of English in college, and yeah, I don't think you need to take college English to get that. I don't know. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And everybody will point, Rome's got seven mountains. Yeah, that's true. I hear Istanbul does too. I hear Moscow, communism does. But guess what? So does Jerusalem. Jerusalem sits on seven mountains or seven hills. Think about it, people. Verse 10, And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seventh, and goeth into perdition. Wasn't Judas Iscariot called the son of perdition? Oh, yeah. Verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Remember, Jesus said many are called, but few are chosen. Oh, yeah. Well, these are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, ah, here we go. The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Let's read that again. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Ooh, wait a minute. Let's go back to Revelation 12. Verse 15. Yeah, let's take a look at that again. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Ooh. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Revelation 17, 15 again. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. It's pretty obvious, people. The flood of the dragon are people, multitudes, nations, and tongues, languages. We're not talking about Pentecostals here. I'll tell you what. I was in New York City about 20 years ago, and... All I saw was a bunch of foreign languages and funny-looking faces. Go down to Miami. You can go a whole day down Miami and not even hear a word, not a lick of English. Go to L.A. You know, I went to L.A., and there were more Spanish-language radio stations than English. I was there about 20-something mm, years ago. I do not ever want to go back to L.A. I hate that place feel about the same way about New York City, but uh, of course they do got some good food in Manhattan, but uh, who, could, who could afford to live there? Donald Trump, I guess. Not me. So, and I grew up in Miami in the early 60s when, you know, now I had a, uh, a guy I know that uh, we were having a discussion, and uh, he said, um, I mentioned about all the murders they've been having lately. I mean, 
And he says, well, you know, it's just you hear more about it now because of the mass media, you know, the newspapers, the radio, the TV, and the Internet. And I go, no, that's not true. I've been reading the newspaper. I've been reading the newspaper since elementary school. Uh, my teacher told me and my parents that I needed to read. My reading was poor in early elementary school. So I started reading newspaper, comic books, whatever. And he looked it up on the Internet. FBI crime, crime statistics, and in the 1906, I think it was 1960, there was way less than a thousand murders in the entire United States. I'm talking from California to New York to Florida to Washington State. The whole country, less than a thousand. Well, guess what? In Chicago last year alone, just Chicago, third largest city in the United States, there was 762 murders, almost as many as the entire country in 1960. Of course, we had prayer back in 1960 in the United States, prayer and Bible readings in public schools and prayers in Jesus' name back then. What happened? You tell me. I already know. All right. What's happening in Europe? flood of the dragon. The flood of the dragon. Aren't they fighting like crazy, trying to, you know, uh, you go to London, the people of England are called London now, they call it London Stan. France, Germany, same thing. Sweden. I mean, it's the flood of the dragon. All right, and he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. Praise God. For God hath put in their hearts, for God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. All right? So let's take a look. Uh, let's see. In Revelation 10, 15 and 16. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away at the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth. What does that mean? The earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Okay. Well, in Genesis chapter 4, remember Cain slew Abel, killed him? In verse 11, the Lord said, and now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Ah, okay. Now, I'm, bear with me. I'm going to be reading some good stuff here. Let's turn to the book of Numbers chapter 16, starting in verse 1. I think we're going to read chapters 16 and 17. And then we're going to close up this study. Now Korah, Korah's not a good guy, by the way, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, he was a Levite. He was a priest of the priest tribe of the Lord. The son of Levi and Dathan and Ab Abiram, the sons of Eliab and On, the son of Peleth, Sons of Reuben took men. Now, Reuben, Reuben is not a priest. He's not the king like Judah. Reuben's just Reuben. Nobody special, right? Verse 2, And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. So you got 250 high society people here. You know, the princes, the famous in the congregation, men of renown. 
And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord? Ooh. Remember? Now let's take a look at something here. Well, let's read the story of Moses. Exodus chapter 2 and verse 1. And there went a man of the house of Levi, that was the tribe of the priests, and took to wife a daughter of Levi. So they were purebred Levites. And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. You see, Pharaoh had decreed that any male child be cast into the river. And guess what lives in the river? Crocodiles. So I guess the crocodiles were having a feast with all the male Hebrew children, right? Verse 3. Um, and when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sisters stood afar off to it what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river and her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. Talk about divine providence. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, Because I drew him out of the water. And it came to pass in those days, when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian smiting an Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way, and he looked that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. So Moses killed him, right? How dare you hurt one of my Hebrew people? And when he went out on the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together, and he said to them that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. This thing is known. In other words, it went blab, blabbed everywhere, right? Now, when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. And if you read the rest of the story, you know, he helps uh, the priest of Midian and, and gets a wife. And, you know, then the burning bush and God calls Moses, sends him back. You know? So, in Acts 7 and verse 35, we read, This Moses, whom they refused, who? Israel. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. Oh, yeah. So, so who is Korah and all these other people? And they gathered themselves, uh, let's see, we're going back to Numbers 16, verse 3. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, so here it is the rabble. Ye take too much upon you, Moses, seeing all the congregation of holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. 
Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. All right, so when Moses heard this, he fell upon his face, right? Verse 5, And he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him, even whom, even him whom he hath chosen, he will cause to come near unto him. This do, take your censers, Korah, and all his company. Now, what's a censer? It's it's like a it's an incense burner. Uh, this do take your censers, Korah, and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. Ooh, seemeth it but a small thing unto you? that the God of Israel hath separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of, of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them? And he hath brought thee near to him and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee. And seek ye the priesthood also? For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord? And what is Aaron? that ye murmur against him. What's murmuring? It's, you know, complaining under your breath, right? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, We will not come up. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of a land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us? Ooh. Wow. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of field and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. And Moses was very wroth, and he said unto the Lord, Respect not, their, respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And an ass is a donkey, by the way. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they, and Aaron, tomorrow. And take every man a censer, and put incense in them, and bring ye before the Lord every man a censer, two hundred and fifty censers, thou also, and Aaron, each of you a censer. And they took every man a censer, and put fire in them, and laid incense thereon, and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And what do you call uh, incense in the temple? Holy smoke, right? Holy smoke. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And no, this is not the she kina. It's a different word. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves. Separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O oh God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the congregation the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they got up, so they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan and Abiram, on every side, and Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives, and their sons, and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men 
die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth. Ooh. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up. Ah. And the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up, with all that appertaineth unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. So in other words, the ground opened up and swallowed them, people. Earthquake, I guess. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertaineth, appertained unto Korah, and all their goods, they and all that appertained to them, and went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them. And the earth closed upon them. So the, the, the earth opened up and then closed on them. The earth opened her mouth, people. And they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. And they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning and scatter thou the fire yonder, for they are hallowed, the censers of these sinners against their own souls. Let them make broad plates for a covering of the altar, for they offered them before the Lord. Therefore they are hallowed, and they shall be a sign unto the children of Israel. And Eliezer the priest took the brazen censers, wherewith they that were burnt had offered, and they made broad plates for a covering of the altar, to be a memorial, to be a memorial, unto the children of Israel, that no stranger which is not of the seed of Aaron come near to offer incense before the Lord, that he be not that he be not as Korah, that he be not as Korah, and as his company, as the Lord said to him by the hand of Moses. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses. Oh yeah, they complained. Murmuring. The children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, Ye have killed the people of the Lord. Ye have killed the people of the Lord. And it came to pass, when the congregation were gathered against Moses and against Aaron, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation, and behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Ooh, look out. Get you up from among this congregation that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer and put fire therein for off the altar and put on incense and go quickly unto the congregation and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague is begun. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation and behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living. And the plague was stayed. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700 beside them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the plague was stayed. Not a good thing, people, to murmur against those whom God appoints. In Numbers 26 and verse 10, it's, we read, And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah. When that company died, what time the fire devoured 250 men, and they became a sign. Deuteronomy 
And what he did unto Dothan, Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their households and their tents and all the substance that was in their possession in the midst of all Israel. Isaiah 5 and verse 14. Therefore, hell, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth, rejoiceth, shall descend into it. So now, does Revelation chapter 12, verse 16 make sense? And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood of the dragon. I'm sorry, swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out, of his mouth. Okay. How about Jude chapter 1 and verse 10? But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them. Woe unto them. For they have gone in the way of Cain, the murder, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam, Balaam was a uh, prophet that was told of the Lord, don't go with somebody, but they offered him so much money, he says, oh, I'm going to go with them and take the money. Didn't care what the Lord said. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Cori, C-O-R-E. It's the Greek rendering of Korah. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurs, complainers, complainers, walking after their own lusts and their mouths speaking great swelling words having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto them that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Ooh. All right. So let's go back to Revelation chapter 12. We're getting ready to close up here. So now we know what's meant when it says, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. All right, Revelation 12 and verse 17, the last one. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So if you have the testimony of Jesus Christ and you don't keep the commandments, well, dragon's not going to be wroth with you. 
So which commandments? Well, let's take a look real quick, and we'll close this out soon. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 36, 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, uh, he's a Bible law lawyer. He's a Bible scholar lawyer, not like a lawyer today. Sadly, um, do you know that Harvard, Princeton, and Yale were originally Bible colleges? Now they're anything but. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, so he's trying to give him a question, but it's a trick question. And he says to Jesus, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. When Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, how hard is that? So, who's the woman? Let's find out. Revelation 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. Not the old Jerusalem, that's polluted. Remember, it was called uh, Sodom and Egypt. And I, John, saw the new city, the holy city, holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh, he that overcometh, shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. Is this the woman, the same woman, the lamb's, you know, the woman that we just read about in Revelation 12? I think so. Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written therein, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Now, if they're not Israel, where's the thirteenth Gentile gate? There's only twelve gates. And at the gates, twelve angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The twelve apostles minus Judas Iscariot equals eleven, plus Paul equals twelve. My opinion. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, and hundred and forty and four cubits, 
according to the measure of man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was of was pure gold like unto clear glass. That's crystal gold, people. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh crystal uh, chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth a chrysophreus. I don't know. I should have taken geology, right? The eleventh a uh, jacinth, the twelfth an amethyst, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every Several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Oh, yeah. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, nor whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie. But they that are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. That's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.